welcome to Library of Prophetic Influence. I am Pastor April, and I am glad that you are tuning in today. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to start off a little differently today by asking you a question. Have you ever spent time with God in prayer, asking him for something and waiting for it, and, and weeks go by, months go by, even years go by, and it just never manifested? Well, today we are going to talk about how to release a hindered prayer. But we, tonight we're going to go and talk about uh, the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel. We're going to go through 1 Samuel, 1st chapter uh, 1 through 18. And it's going to be about a story of Hannah. I know a lot of you probably know Hannah. Most of you probably don't know Hannah. So we're going to get a little bit of in-depthness of what she is. At the same time, we are going to um, just get revelation on what God wanted you through her story. Hannah it was a woman of grace. Her name in Hebrew means grace. But a lot of people know Hannah to her story to operate through faith. But we are going to look at the story of Hannah a little more different. We're going to view it a little more different on why was her prayers hindered? Why was Hannah prayers hindered? The first question I'm going to ask, I want to release two important points. Two important points. The first one is well, the two most important points in prayer, which is the first one, thank you. The first one is make sure you take the right spirit into prayer. You, I know you like Pastor April, what, what are you talking about? The first point to understanding prayer is take the right spirit into prayer. The second one, you must speak God's language. Those are the two points that I'm going to start off with. And by the end of this session, you're going to understand what I meant by that. So again, we are going to go in 1 Samuel chapter 1, 1 through 18, talking about the story of Hannah. Now, Hannah, she was a woman of faith. She was. She was a woman of grace. God had a lot of favor upon her. However, she was human just as we are human. And she had things that hindered her prayer. So tonight I am going to tap, on, tap into some things that is going to be uh, relevant or probably resonate with you. And if it do, at the end of this session, we are going to release a prayer of God for freedom. Hannah had no children. She was the, she was the wife of Elkanah. And Elkanah had another wife which, uh, named Penina. Penina had children. Hannah didn't have children. So in, that, so in this situation right here, Hannah had a problem because she wanted children. Penina was a person that provoked Hannah. She aggravated Hannah. She made Hannah feel bad because she could not bear children. She went year by year to the temple praying to God, asking for a son that she would be able to have a child like Penina. Like Penina. Hannah... I want to take my time, but at the same time, I want to make sure we get everything. Hannah went into the temple with a mindset, with a negative mindset, which she thought was faith and also a heart condition. I want to read to you from my Septuagint Bible, which gave us a little more insight on what actually trans, um, transpired then. So in the Septuagint Bible, in 1 Samuel 1 6 it says and this is this is right here it's going to set the foundation of what um this lesson is about it says for the lord gave her no child because of her affliction and according to her despondency of her affliction and she was dumb dispirited on this account that the lord shut her womb so as not to give her a child I hope you understood what just what I just read. God shut Hannah's womb because she was operating in affliction and depression. It says despondency. That is depression, loss of courage and hope. Now she was taking this into the prayer room. So my my challenge for you some today is to think about what you're thinking about before you enter into the prayer room. So like I said my first point Make sure you take the right spirit into the prayer room. Because Hannah, she took affliction, she took agony, she took depression, which, which encountered loss, hopelessness, into prayer, but she was asking for God to release something in her life. God cannot release nothing in her life when those spirits are in operation. 
So we're going to go a little more. We're going to tap a little further into that. What does that mean? So let's start with affliction. Affliction is one of the most common things that is transpiring today. Number one, cancer. Cancer is one of the number one afflictions that is hitting the world big time. But God is the one that has a last say so when it comes to affliction. Affliction produces suffering, um, incurable diseases and sicknesses, mental pain, sorrow of soul. So again, these are the things that Hannah was taking into the prayer room and, and was respecting God's results. The ultimate cure for affliction is not what man can do. It's a divine intervention. The Bible says in Psalms 34, 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him out of them all. The Lord will deliver him out of them all. What does that mean? That if you are suffering from cancer, the Lord will deliver you out of them all. If you are suffering from a soulish hurt, if you are suffering from any type of sickness that you feel that the doctors can't do nothing about, the Lord will deliver you out of them all. Because he said, many are the afflictions of the righteous. So when you read the word of God, you have to trust the word of God and have faith in the word of God, meaning that you know that what he has said in his word will manifest in your life. But you have to see it, you have to feel it, and you have to wait for it to manifest. The next um, affliction, the next spirit that she was operating in when she went into the temple was the spirit of depression. The spirit of depression is something that is considered common now, which is very sad amongst the world. Because a lot of us, Christians, believers, and unbelievers suffer from depression. Depression is a psychotic or neurotic condition. What does that mean? It produces emotional and psychological disorders, mental, okay? It, it makes you have the inability to concentrate. It causes you not to be able to sleep. Um, it has a lot of, a numerous amount of meanings, but I'm just going to cover a couple, a few. Uh, constant sadness, hopelessness, and heaviness, and loneliness. Again, these are the things that Hannah was taking into the prayer room. So the second point is we have to know how to speak God's language. So how do we speak God's language? We're going to move forward into that. But we got to remember that when it came to depression, it's not something that's new into the world. It's something that's not new under the sun. A lot of people in the Bible experience depression and affliction. And just to give a few examples as far as depression, um, the spirit attacked, the spirit of depression attacked Elijah, David, and Jesus. And in saying that, it shows you that you're okay. You're not the only one going through these things in darkness. You're not the only one that's alone. You're not the only one that's experiencing these things. I actually experienced depression at one time, and I had to use the power of God, the word of God, and the faith to be able to pull myself through the Holy Spirit out of that depression because he was trying to hinder me from what God wanted me to do. So when he came against Elijah, Elijah intervened with divine intervention. God sent an angel and crows and so forth to be able to help Elijah overcome because of Jezebel. The other um, person is David. David overcame the spirit of depression through God's word. And that's in Psalms 119, 28. I'm going to quote a little, I'm going to quote the scriptures. I'm not quote them, but I'm going to give you the scriptures so you can go back and read them just for the sake of time. Okay. The last one is Jesus. Jesus prayed. He prayed his way out of depression. And that's in Matthew 26, 38. So as you see, this are, these are um, different type of spirits that is not uncommon to the people or the believer of God. But we had to make sure that we go into the prayer room with the right mindset to where we are not taking things in like doubt or faithlessness or, or hopelessness or things that, that will actually come against what God wants to do in your life. So again, Hannah was a woman that wanted a son. And in doing that, she could not actually manifest a son because of these different things that she had going on in her life. And Panina, which was the other wife, did not make it easier. She provoked Hannah. She provoked Hannah. She made her very weary. And I'm going to release that to you right now. You might have a Panina in your life. You might have someone that is constantly keeping those demonic doors open to, pre to prevent you on purpose to not allow you to succeed in the things of God. But I'm going to tell you right now that that Panina spirit can be destroyed. And all you got to do is cast it down and speak the word of a God over your situation and rebuke Panina in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So when we came, we now we understand that Hannah 
was a woman of faith, but she had issues. We have issues. We have faith, but we have to know how to overcome our issues with our faith. Again, she went to the temple year by year. So that tells you that your, your prayers is not going to automatically answer tomorrow. It's a chance because God is God. But it's still a chance that it might take years. It's a chance it might take months. It's a chance it might take weeks. But you've got to continue to stay faithful in the things of God and speak God's language. And let me tell you how to speak God's language. So our first point was you got to be careful of what spirit you're taking into the prayer room. The second point is speaking God's language. Now, when Hannah came to a place of, um, I'm going to just read it in 1 Samuel 1.10, it says, Hannah was greatly distressed and she prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. So again, she took demonic spirits into a temple of God, expecting godly results. But she made a miraculous turnaround. What was different about this prayer time that Hannah went into the temple and prayed and got results versus all those other years that she went and never received anything out of it? In 1 Samuel 1, 11, it, it reads, She made a vow saying, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction, which is my suffering, of your maidservant and remember and not forget your maidservant, she said, I will give your, your maidservant my son. If you give me a son, I will give him back to you. Now, the point I'm going to make right here is, it said, if you will indeed look upon my affliction. Now, as I mentioned earlier, affliction can only be healed by divine intervention. And being that, um, being that Hannah brought that affliction to God, now she's saying, I have a problem. Please look at my problem and have mercy upon me. Now that, ha that allows God to come in with his divine intervention and move those demonic spirits that was hindering her purpose as well as his purpose. That's powerful right there. That's powerful right there. Because now she's speaking God's language. What is God's language? The word she mentioned was vile. Vile. She made a vow to God. What is vow? In Greek, it means promise and it means a gift. Now, this is how it is God language in her time. Because of them not having a Bible back in the time that, that Hannah actually lived, they had Moses and they had laws. So within those laws, Hannah spoke a law or a promise that God asked Moses to release to the Israelites, which is called a vow. And it's called the law of the Nazarites. So by her speaking the law of the Nazarites, and I'm going to read this to you so you can have further understanding. It says... In Numbers, uh, what is this, 6, 1, it says, again, the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Say to the son of Israel, when a man or woman makes a special vow, the vow of a Nazarite, that is one separated and dedicated to the Lord. What does that mean? A vow means that this person that they are using or they are, are releasing this vow upon is being consecrated, set apart to do the works of God. Now, normally when they do a, a, a vow to the Lord, it, it normally only lasts two weeks. But when God have a purpose for someone like Samuel, because if you remember, um, not just Samuel, but Samson. Samson also mother made a vow that saying that I will no longer give him drink. I will not let a razor touch his head. That's the law. That's part of the law. So within saying that God used him for his whole life versus two weeks because it was a divine purpose that was involved. So now we're now talking about Samuel. Now, we don't know that his name was Samuel yet because he had not yet been born, but I'm just kind of giving you futuristic uh, information. So in saying that, when Hannah made a vow saying if, if God was to give her a son, that means that she automatically, she automatically separated, consecrated th that boy for a divine purpose. So in saying that, she spoke God language. God heard it. And while she continued on praying, now, that was a physical formation of prayer. Now, she went into the second part of prayer, which I want to clarify because that was like um, the major part. It's two parts of prayer of which Hannah prayed. So, now that she made that vow to God saying, if you give me a son, if you look upon my affliction, if you heal me and, and actually give me a son, I make a promise to you that you can have him back. 
Now the second part is in 12, verse 12, 1 Samuel 1, 12 says, Now it happened as to continue praying before the Lord that Eli was washing her mouth. Eli was the priest of the temple. He was one of the priests of the temple. Hannah was speaking in her heart slash her mind. Only her lips was moving and her voice was not heard. So Eli thought she was drunk. Now this right here is a prophetic point right here. So I hope that you are really tuning in to what I'm saying. Eli looked at the woman's lips. He watched her lips and saw that she was murmuring. So he assumed that she was drunk because he was no longer operating in the prophetic things of God. He was operating from a soulish realm because of his sons operating in sin. So he lost his prophetic reign a long time ago. So he was looking at her prayer from a fleshly manner versus from a prophetic manner. He thought she was drunk, but at the same time, she was only praying. So he lost his eyes for God in that moment. So in that part, going back to her prayer, it says Hannah was speaking in her heart and in her mind. Only her lips was moving. So now the first part she prayed, she prayed verbally. She prayed, it says she spoke. That means she spoke God's language. Now the second part is your part. I'm going to explain what that means. Now once you pray physically, the second part of that prayer it says that she prayed, she was, she was praying, moving her lips, but nothing came out of her mouth. She was praying with her heart. Now, when you come, I believe uh, Pastor Glenn talked about this in the colony. It's about what you're thinking. You have thoughts and you have emotions. When you think about something, which is a vision, this is what she was doing. She was praying in her heart and in her mind. So that means she was visualizing herself with the sun and she was feeling it in her heart. So when you think about something, which is a thought, and now you say, okay, I want a son, and now you go into your emotions and you say, well, do I, if I have a son, is that going to give me good feelings or bad feelings? That's emotion. When thoughts and emotion come together, you develop a feeling. That feeling is produced in your heart. So once you develop that feeling, it is a very good sensation. It's that moment that you feel something weird. You get the, you know, your rectal pili muscles is coming up on your, on your arms, and you just having a good feeling about it. That is another part of prayer that helped manifest the things of God here on earth as it is in heaven. Why? Because heaven and earth is one. Now, just to keep things going, just to keep things going, that's God's language. So being that she was able to speak God's language and she was able to pray with feeling, then now the manifestation come. Now, Hannah, we look at this as, oh, God gave her a son. But Hannah was pregnant with a son. But heaven was pregnant with a prophet. So God had already had something in mind with the son of Hannah that she didn't even know. But she had to first release her afflictions upon God so he can divinely remove them, that he can pursue those things that she needed to be, that needed to be done so everything could be made manifest. So now you have to look, I, I look at um, that situation and, and I think to myself, because I go through things myself, but I have to look at that and analyze everything that happens in my life. When you go through situations, if you have that spirit of, of heaviness, if you have having that way swaying back and forth, if you have that moment where your job is just giving you all kind of trouble and nothing is turning out right for you, if you have those financial um, um, problems, you got to stop and stop responding with, at a soulish realm and really think about and come in alignment with the Holy Spirit and say, am I pregnant? Am I in labor? Are these pregnant pains? Are these labor pains? Or is this something of the enemy? But you have to be one with the Holy Spirit to be able to determine that. So you, next time you look at your situation, don't just think it's the enemy. See if this God is releasing his purpose in your life. Because we don't know. We look at things as the enemy is already always attacking us. But it's, always, it's also God always releasing something. And it's going to cause pain to bring something in. Birth have pain. Deliverance. Deliverance is freedom. When we give birth, we, we, we're releasing freedom. So now when you look at the word of God and say, you know what, I've been, I've been studying the word of God. I've been, med I've been meditating on the word of God. I've been using it according to my life, but now I'm going through all this stuff. Why? Because you need to look and make sure that God is not releasing and birthing something in you and you destroying it. You are aborting it thinking it's the enemy. So I encourage you to point one, be careful of what spirits you take into your prayer room. Point two, you have to speak God's language. If you're not able to speak God's language and if you're not able to go into the prayer room in faith and with a clear mind and, in a, and with a hope of expectation, then you are not going to come out with the result. We can't look at, we can no longer look at what the world is doing to us. We have to look at what God is doing for us. 
And I'm going to just stop right there. Because I want this to resonate. I want this to resonate. I know this was a fast message. I know this was a lot. I hope I didn't throw up on you. But this is something that we need to understand when it comes to prayer and what to, how we go into prayer. Because God wants to manifest those prayers. He said, sin keep you away from his blessings. But he wants to bless you. He wants to use you. He wants to be able to call you not just his child, but use you as an instrument. Because there is a lot of work to be done. The harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. Because the mind, the enemy is coming in, messing with our minds, continuing to confuse our identity, trying to make us forget who we are in God. But we are the exact image of Christ. God said, let's create man in our image. So therefore, we have to look past this dirt body and know that we are a spirit being, that we are a spirit with power. We are a spirit with authority. We are a spirit that manifests the things on earth. So everything that you speak, you have to know that it's going to be so. He said, if you decree a thing, it shall be established. So don't go into your prayer room asking for nothing. He didn't say ask. He said, if you decree it, that means if you declare it out of your mouth and you say it's done, then it's done and it cannot be taken back. And therefore, it shall manifest here on earth as it is in heaven. So I'm just going to close by releasing a prayer upon all those who is listening that feel hindered, that want to be, that want to have that breakthrough for 2019. Because we always get, you know, always happy and excited about 2000, you know, the, the next year. This year is 2019. And yes, it releases prosperity, it releases grace, but it also releases pain. It also released things that you don't want in your life. So you got to make sure you start this year with the right seed. You got to start this year with the right purpose. You got to start this year with the right faith. So I'm just going to reach out right now and just pray for those that have suffered or that are suffering from affliction, from a spirit of affliction and a spirit of depression. I thank you right now, Lord, that you are listening, that you have come into this place, Father God, and you are being released to this, in this stream, Father, to each and every person that is listening to this word. And Father, I just thank you that everything that you have spoken right now, God, it is already manifest, Father. For the spirit of affliction, Father, I release, I command your divine, interme your divine intervention to be released right now. I release your angels, Father God, to protect, to protect those, God, that is, Father God, struggling and have no kind of fight or defense, Lord God. Let your spirit, Father God, continue to pursue and overtake them, Lord God. Send forth, Father God, Jehovah Gabor. Contend with those that contend with them. Fight against those that fight against them, Father God. I release your Jehovah Nisi, Father, for you are their victory. You are their God. You are their protection. Father God, I thank you that you are Jehovah Rapha in their sight, Father, for you say I am that I am. And I thank you that you are their healer, God, that your by your sight, the stripes of your son, Lord, they have already been deemed healed in the name of Jesus. So I speak healing from the cross this uh, in all the nations. I speak healing in the mind. I speak healing in the soul. I speak healing in the heart in the name of Jesus. Father God, I come against every spirit of depression and I cancel every spirit of heaviness, Father God, and soulishness in the name of Jesus. I bind, Father God, every spirit, Father God, of, of loneliness or Father God, and sorrow of heart, God. Everything that the enemy tried to put up on your people, Lord, I cancel it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. You shall not and will not succeed. You shall not and will not stand. And I thank you, Father, for the purpose and plans of God shall prevail in each and every person's life that is listening, that is, Father God, released, that is releasing, that is hearing in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I thank you. I thank you. Thank you. If that resonated with you, God bless you. This year is a new beginning for you. A new beginning. I'm just going to end this by saying, I love you. I want you to be free. I want you to understand prayer. I want you to understand God's language. So when you go to prayer this time, you will go in expectancy. You will go knowing. And I just look forward. If you can send something, let us know how we actually was able to bless your life. We would appreciate that. We have a lot of things going on here, and we want you to be involved. But for the most part, I just want to say thank you for tuning in to the Library of Prophetic Influence. I look forward to seeing you next week, and I just say bless you.